Hello everybody, this is Rick, your singing wealth coach, and I am here today with the incomparable Les Brown, Mamie Brown's baby boy, the incomparable Les Brown. Top of the afternoon to you, top of the evening to you, brother Les. How are you, my illustrious I'm friend? I'm great. I would hit a note, but you can't handle the note. <laughs> yes, behave. <laughs> behave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, listen, first of all, Les, I want to tell you that it's been a pleasure being here at your speakers conference on wealth and health, and it has been spectacular. We've learned so much from you, and uh, you're just a blessing, man, just really Well, an you've been an blessing. incredible blessing to me because, ladies and gentlemen, when I look at this book here, Einstein said that genius is having the capacity to make the complicated simple. I mean, look at this book, Control Everything own nothing, secrets of how the wealthy legally avoid taxes and protect themselves and their assets from lawsuits. That's major because studies have been done and they ask people, what's the number one way in which you can get rich? And the number one way that people point out that they can become wealthy is suing somebody who has something. And so when you think about what you have put together here, something that will allow people to protect themselves and learn how to duplicate what the wealthy have been doing for years. For years. Uh, people have been operating out of the thinking of what you don't know can hurt you. What you don't know can keep you broke. Yes, sir. And make you vulnerable to lawsuits and keep us in generational poverty for years because we have not learned how to master the rules of the game. And this book, and, and I love the fact that it's not a lot of pages. I train speakers and I say to people, the best speakers make the fewest words go the farthest. Yes, sir. And so you, there's something about the word profound that when something is powerful mm -hmm. and it's potent mm -hmm. and that people can understand it, read it, and apply it right away, mm -hmm. that's major. This book is profound. It's a game changer for your life. I'm saying to you personally, I'm educating my children on this, my grandchildren. I'm a great grandfather. And, and as you look at yourself and look at where we are right now in a time where people working two jobs and then getting in line at a blood bank to sell their blood to get money for groceries or buy gas or pay their utilities. We need all the protection that we can get. And I'm saying to you, protect yourself. I'm saying to you, control everything, but own nothing. The philosophy of the wealthy and man, thank you. This, this is a download from God, what you have put together here. And I'm just proud to align myself with you to support and believe in this and believe in you because you're a person of integrity and you honor your word as yourself. And I'm just excited about our partnership. I'm so excited to be here too, Les. You are a man after God's own heart and definitely mine. And mm -hmm. uh, what I want to say to you is that I appreciate the fact that you pour so much into people. You know, we've been here and uh, even some of my staff came down and he poured into their lives. I mean, just genuine, just real, just as real as real could get. There's a word called colorable that I was reading this morning. And it mm -hmm. was talking about the difference when a person doesn't have any substance. It was talking about something that's fake, something that's unauthentic, something that is purported as being real, mm -hmm. but it's really phony. And mm -hmm. when I get around you, I just feel such a realness in the air. You know, people know you, you from around the world and people know you around the world, but when you get around you, Mm -hmm. When a person gets around you, they can feel the realness, brother. And uh, I just want you to know that I'm just glad to be one of your students. And I just want to say to everybody that's listening, first of all, I want to thank you so much for training me. And I came mm -hmm. back here personally just to give you uh, a blessing, um, you know, for the training that you've been doing you with us. You're trying to break me down. I know, well, I'm just saying that we just appreciate you. You're trying you, to make me speak in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Les, I'm amazed at people who don't really appreciate who's around them. They don't recognize who's around them. You know, when Jesus was sitting at the well with the sister, he said, if you knew who you was talking to mm -hmm. and you knew the gift of God who mm -hmm. was talking to you, he said, baby, you would ask me for a drink. 
you know, mm-hmm. he said, and they said, I would have gave it to you too. Well, I recognize who you are. You mm. know, I recognize the fact that you are somebody that if a man or a woman is around you and they just will allow you to pour into their lives, will allow you to teach them, will allow you to be able to transfer your power over you because you're a transfer agent. You know, you have some, so much power inside of you until it's palpitating. And when a person gets in your presence, if they don't see that, if they don't understand it, if they don't recognize that, it's because they are willfully ignorant or they are willfully mm-hmm. fighting the idea of letting the smallness inside of them go and let some largeness come inside them because you're a very large man. You know, I, I can feel that when I come around you. And I just want to say thank you. And to my colleagues who are listening, I want you all to understand that when a man like you is willing to train somebody, they should really look at the reality of life. And that's that whatever money you will accept from a person is a tip. They really need to understand that. Because mm-hmm. when I meet people less, they say, hey, man, how much does it cost to get in your classes, Rick? I say, I'm pretty sure you're asking me how much do you have to pay to get in the class? I say, I say, if you don't know the difference between paying for something and what it costs, you'll never have any money. Right. You know, Because they're thinking, they thinking what they pay for something. What I'm paying you for you to teach me and train me and for me to be around your greatness, what I'm paying you is not what it costs. Mm. What it costs is what it would have cost me if I wasn't paying you. Yes. And when I meet people, you know, I'm like, listen, if you get together with Les Brown, Les Brown, I'm talking about 2.2 billion searches of your name on the Internet. And even more important than that, when a person actually gets together with you, they find out you were real made out of clay human being with an amazing amount of love, affection for people, but um, uh, equally as important, an amazing fountain of information and power. And there's no way in the world that a person can be next to you and don't feel that doggone power. There's mm-hmm. no way in the world a person can get around you and is not infused with what it is that you have because you are an amazing transfer agent. And I just want the whole world to know that they need to stop. If they want to learn how to speak, if they want to learn how to communicate, if they want to learn how to tell stories, I'm talking about magnificent stories that make a person feel like they just jumped off of a page <laughs> and came into another person's life. It ain't, no per- it ain't a person on the planet who can tell it like you do. So I just want to tell I just want to commend you. When it comes down to negotiating, I listen to Chris Voss. Mm-hmm. He's the number one negotiator for the hot, for, for international, um, for the FBI. So he was number one and he worked for him for 20 years. Mm-hmm. So he's an amazing negotiator, so I listen to him. When it comes down to playing some basketball, I was um, a colleague of Michael Jordan's in his heyday, you know, so I yes. paid attention to Michael. You know, I came in a game one day, we was playing with Michael and everybody started screaming and hollering. I thought they were screaming and hollering for me. Yes. And I, then I looked up less, and Mike was coming to the game at the same time, and reality kicked in. Okay. So, so it's just like when me and you on the stage and you talking, and I start trying to tell my little stories and stuff. And he said, Brother Ricky, that was some third grade stuff. Let me show you how it really got. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> how can you get mad at the get mad at the, at the icon who really is the best in the world? How are you going to get mad if somebody's in the best? If you're a little less than the best in the world, mm. Come on now. You can't live with that. I didn't say that. But let me just say this about you. When people talk about what does it cost, here's what I want you to think about, ladies and gentlemen. He said, control everything, own nothing. You have to ask yourself, what will it cost you if you don't do it? Because the penalty the liabilities, because of your not knowing how to legally avoid paying taxes like the wealthy do. You're not having the knowledge and the skills that you need to protect your assets that you work so very hard for. And that lack of knowledge, something that Bob Proctor said, he said the primary reason that most people are failing and end up being involved in lawsuits and paying taxes that they shouldn't be paying, it's because of ignorance. Ignorance. And that's willful ignorance today. Mm -hmm. When you've got a book and an icon who is an expert and respected and recognized in this space, and here you go and give me this big check. I ain't gonna tell you this check is $50,000 but I got to put my glasses on, <laughs> excuse me, and I got to restrain myself right now. I got to go to the bathroom, hold on a minute. 
<laughs> the last one you told me, I said, so how much it cost to be trained by you? And you said um, 150, 200, whatever you said. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, for a whole year? And he's like, for the whole year. I said, I get to watch Les Brown smile <laughs> for a whole year? He's like, for a whole year. I mean, I get to listen to the best stories in the world for a whole year? He's like, for a whole year. I mean, we get to kick it around the world for a whole year? For a like, whole year. For a whole year. And if anybody is hesitating to do business with you for that tip, because it ain't nothing but a tip, if somebody's willing to do, you say, well, people might say, well, Ricky, you rich. You've been rich all your life and all. No, I came from the south side of Chicago eating mayonnaise sandwiches, still my favorite meal in the world. <laughs> mayonnaise sandwiches. Yeah. Huh? You're still fav- yes. They say, Ricky, what's your favorite meal in the world? I say, when I was a hungry, eating the mayonnaise sandwiches. Yes. That's, that's my favorite meal, not the, not the yes. filet mignon they be eating right now. Yes. So we, we ain't chillings and we call it ruffle steak. Come on now, you got to use your imagination, baby. Yeah. We stay through our window, we watch her, she passes by, but it was just our imagination. We can imagine we was eating some good stuff, yes. huh, brother? Come uh, on we can now. imagine that. Yes. <laughs> no, he didn't go there. He did not go there. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, it's in me, it's coming out. Trust me on this. It's coming. I'm coming for you. Yes. I want to just say, man, your humility, your gift of singing, and your genius of helping people to understand what it takes to protect themselves and to protect their families and allow building generation wealth is not just lip service, but it's life service by the application of the things that they learn from you. And from this book, you know, they say, and there's a theme of a radio station that said, knowledge is power. And I beg to differ. Mm -hmm. Applied knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And you are giving people the step-by-step process. You walk them through it. You hold their hands on how they can apply the knowledge that they learn and what can make a difference for them and their families and generations unborn how to control everything but own nothing. This is a time that that's needed now more than ever. You were born and preserved for such a time as this. And it's my honor to work with you. Man, it's my pleasure, brother. I really appreciate you. You know, you remind me of um, uh, the story of uh, Kermit the Frog. Uh, Kermit. Did you say Kermit the Frog? Kermit the Frog, yeah. He was outside. And, okay. Uh, and, uh, and, and little Johnny looked outside. He saw little Kermit the Frog hopping around. He said, man, I want him for a pet. They say, no, I'll go out there and get him. We're going to eat some frog soup tonight. Uh-huh. So Johnny said, I really don't want to do that to him. His daddy said, boy, you, you go do what I tell you to do. So mm-hmm. Johnny ran outside, hopped around, finally caught up with Kermit, brought him inside and put him into a pot. Well, Kermit, you know, naturally can jump out the pot, yes. but he don't jump because they, they don't turn the heat up on him too quick. They just turn it up gradually a little yes. bit, a little bit, a little bit at a time. So Kermit started chilling. Mm-hmm. You know, he's sweating, you know, almost like he's sweating. You, know, you say no, I say yes. Girl, I bet I can make you sweat. He's sweating yeah. like Keith in here, but he don't realize it because they turn it up on him a little bit at a time, brother Les. Next thing you know, <laughs> Kermit is out, and what they yeah. have for dinner. They have frog soup. So what we want to make sure yes. by you know, our combined efforts in helping the world, we want the world to know that if you don't learn how to protect yourself from taxes and don't learn how to protect yourself from lawsuits, that you're going to end up frog soup. And that's what's going to, uh, frog soup in your, in your assets and everything that you work so hard for is going to end up in the hands of strangers. And brother, I'm so glad um, that we're working together to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I just want to say yes. thank you. Well, thank you, and as Jesse would say, we're going to keep on hoping and keep on hopping because we got frog soup to let us know that ye shall know the truth. And the soup that you talked about, the truth, will set us free from becoming soup and becoming the soup drinkers. Mm. That's the major part. Yes, sir. We don't want to be the soup. We want to sip the soup. Can you feel a brother up in here? <laughs> up in here. <laughs> Thank you once again. Hey, it's, it's been a plum, pleasing pleasure, as you would say. As Doc. well as a privilege. And we want everybody to remember that Stellar is as Stellar does. Until next time. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Right and true, and with thanksgiving, I
I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Say it one more time. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I want to be, I'll be a I couldn't sing, I just hum and sing. Thank you. Well, we love you, brother. We just came to cheer you up some because you cheer up the whole world, man. So well, sorry. thank you. Well, I tell you this. I'm going to, Miss Cookie, you said it's a big thing if we hook up with Donald Lawrence. Well, I'm going to make that happen.